So now we've got our new inverse trig functions. We are, of course, going to have to uh, know how to differentiate them, etc., etc. Ah, inverse sine x. Well, fortunately, we already know how to uh, differentiate the trig functions. So if I rearrange this and make it x equals sine y, and I can differentiate that, I'll differentiate with respect to y, and we get the cosine y. That's dx to y. We want dy dx. So the derivative is 1 over the cosine of y. Now, I could use that, and it just means we would substitute in the y value of the function instead of the x value of the function each time. However, it is more convenient to have x in it uh, because that's what it's with respect to. And should there be other functions we're going to differentiate as well, they'll probably be with respect to x as well. So let's convert this. Cosine of y. Well, through a series of transformations, we can get it there. Cosine of y, I can say that's the square root of cos squared. Cos squared, we know, is 1 minus sine squared. And we've said x is sine y. So we end up with 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So now we've got it in terms of x. Inverse cos, we can do a similar thing. And so we get cosine of y, we're going to differentiate. Cosine, of course, goes to minus sine. So dy dx will be 1 over, or minus 1 over sine y. And then a similar sort of transformation, we can turn that into in terms of x. And we also get a very similar thing. Minus 1 on the square root of 1 minus x squared. And that kind of makes sense if you think of the inverse sine curve and inverse cos curve, or sine and cos curves generally. They are basically the same graph, but just with a shift happening. And so this one ends up with a negative slope, one a positive. Inverse tan, what happens with this one? Well, differentiate tan, we get sec squared. So 1 over sec squared, but again we can transform the sec squared using 1 plus tan squared. You'll notice this one doesn't have the square root, however, uh, because it went straight to sec squared, not just sec. So we didn't have to worry about the square root. And so we have 1 over 1 plus x squared. All right, to generalise those, if it's uh, a linear function, inverse sine of, and we tend to say x over a rather than ax, I suppose that makes it more convenient for the answer. So if you think of it as x over a, then it's just 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared. If, if we had it as a times x, then the formula would be, uh, 1 on a squared looks a bit messy. Okay. So linear functions, x divided by a constant, we get 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared. Again, just like with the trig, that does limit us if we're just talking um, linear functions. So, well, we'll do the other two, but then we'll come back and see how to do generalise it to any type of function. So inverse cos, same sort of thing. We'll have x divided by a, and we get minus 1 on the square root of a squared minus x squared. Inverse tan is where we've got to be careful because it actually ends up with a on top, not 1 on top. So you get a on a squared plus x squared. Because of that difference where some of them there's 1 on top, some of them there's a on top, I prefer to think of them in a more general form. So you've got inverse sine of function x. I can simply say, well, that's going to be the derivative over the square root of function x squared. And for inverse cos, it'll be minus the derivative over the square root of 1 minus function x squared. And for inverse tan, it'll be the derivative over 1 plus function x squared. So it's the derivative on top each time. It doesn't matter which of the three inverse trig. You know, I personally find that easier to, to deal with. So I don't make a silly mistake of, do I put a on top? Do I not put a on top? So let's have a look at some examples. Inverse sine of 5 derivative of 5x is 5, it goes on top, over the square root of 1 minus the function squared, 25x squared, there's the answer. Um, if I had done it the other way, I would have ended up with 1 over the square root of 1 on 25 minus x squared, then you'd multiply top and bottom by the square root of 25 to get rid of the fractions and you'd end up with the, the same thing. So a little bit messy. Oh, the inverse swimming question. Okay. Not a linear function, but because of these ones down here, I can just go minus the derivative. Derivative of e to the x is, of course, e to the x. 
minus e to the x on top. Over the square root, 1 minus a function squared. And remember, when you square e to the x, you don't get e to the x squared. It's e to the 2x. x on 3. I suppose if the constant is on the bottom of the function, that's when the, uh, the linear function integral, integral derivative uh, comes in handy. Because with that one, I could go straight to the answer. 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared. Whereas, thinking of it the way I tend to think of it, I would have probably done it like this. I would have gone, oh, well, the derivative is 1 third over the square root of 1 minus x squared on 9. Um, multiply top and bottom by 3 to get rid of the fractions. And we'll get the square root of 9 minus x squared on the bottom. Remember, whilst I was saying multiply top and bottom by 3, on the bottom I'm actually multiplying by the square root of 9, which is, of course, 3. Okay, e to the power of inverse cos x. So it's actually an exponential function I'm differentiating here. And so our rules for differentiating an exponential function is differentiate the power and put that out the front. Well, the power now is an inverse cos function. Differentiate the inverse cos of x, and I get minus 1 on the square root of 1 minus x squared. But remember, it's an exponential. So times e, and the power doesn't change, so times e to the power of the inverse cos of x. Uh, if you want to make it all one fraction, I suppose you could. And I'll just move the e to the inverse cos x to the top there. Chain rule or anarchy. So bring down the power, 3. Lower the power, 2. Diff the inside. Differentiate inverse tan x is 1, on, 1 plus x squared. And tidying that up. There we go, 3 inverse 10x all squared over 1 plus x squared. Product rule. Write down the first x squared, diff the second. Okay, uh, it's not a linear function, so I'm going to say derivative over 1 plus the function squared, or derivative of x cubed, 3x squared, 1 plus the function squared, x cubed squared, x to the power of 6. Plus, write down the second, diff the first, differentiate x squared, I get 2x. Now all we've got to do is tidy all that up. So we get 3x4. Yeah, nothing more that can happen there is there's no cancelling. Plus 2x inverse tan x cubed. Okay. So 1D, we'll just have a bit of a play with differentiating inverse trig. And of course, there may also be all those related questions. And now we can have even more interesting graphs to draw and find stationary points and so on.